Our regular contributor, a respirologist and associate professor in the Department of Medicine at the University of Toronto. He is in Toronto, and it's very good to see you too, Dr. Gupta, after a long absence. So, hello again. <laughs> we reintroduce. Still with some very important COVID questions to answer, and I'm glad to have you back to look at some of these uh, latest headlines, Dr. Gupta. Vic's reporting there, and you heard specifically address Canada waiting and watching for data coming out from other countries on boosters. We know that Israel, for example, Dr. Gupta, is going to be presenting data to the FDA in the United States in just a matter of days and weeks about extending boosters even to children, back to down to the age of 12. What are the kinds of details, what is the kind of information that is going to be important for Canada to hear as we move forward with boosters? Yeah, and, and it's important to talk about Israel because, uh, Heather, as you know, Israel was really one of the first countries in the world to successfully mass vaccinate their population. Uh, and as a result of that, they're, they're going to act kind of like the canary in the coal mine for the rest of the world in that if there is a waning immunity over time, uh, we're going to learn about it from Israel. That's where we're going to see it. Uh, and in some ways, we're at an advantage because although it was frustrating initially in that we had delays, uh, we've had a later vaccine campaign, so we do have that has bought us a little bit of time. Uh, we have data. We have data from Qatar, from the U.S., from the U.K., as well as from Israel that have looked at what happens to vaccine efficacy over time, at just about at the six-month mark after the second shot. Important thing is that all of these data are pretty consistent that when you look at severe outcomes like hospitalization or death, the vaccine that we have now remains very effective against Delta. The effectiveness is still in and about 80% against Delta. So this vaccine remains very good to prevent bad things from happening from the variant that is currently circulating. And that's important because we're if we were trying to completely eradicate the virus, we would worry more about asymptomatic or symptomatic infections. But in some ways, that ship has sailed. We're really focused now on, on limiting the damage. And we, we can limit the damage with this vaccine. Now, the, the efficacy against asymptomatic and symptomatic infections does seem lower than it was in the initial trials. And there are many potential reasons for that. One of the reasons could be waning immunity. We know that antibody levels drop over time. That doesn't necessarily mean waning immunity because there are other mechanisms of immunity from vaccines like T cells and B cells, things that we don't readily measure with antibody levels. Um, but we're going to want to learn from Israel what actual waning immunity looks like and also what boosters do. They've given boosters to more than 2 million people. So what do they do not only to antibody levels, but to actual protection from breakthrough infections? September the 17th is the date I'm seeing for that, that official reporting from Israel too. As I said, U.S. authorities will glean information from that, but those are the kinds of details that uh, they are set to provide and that uh, other countries are set to learn from. I'm wondering if uh, you could also respond to something that we're talking about in our news today, and that is the word out of Quebec, talking about full vaccination, two shots to this point, leading on vaccine passports, leading on vaccination. And what we're hearing from Quebec, it is ordered its health care workers in public and private settings to be fully vaccinated by October the 15th. And if they're not, they're going to be suspended without pay. There will be big economic consequences. What do you think the impact of that will be, Dr. Gupta? Yeah, I think this is something that folks in the healthcare community have been calling for for some time now. And, and most of the unions uh, in healthcare are aligned with this in that it, as healthcare workers, we are by definition taking care of a vulnerable population, uh, people who are ill, in many cases, people who can't get the vaccine or in whom we know the vaccines are less effective. So it's up to us to protect those folks by getting vaccinated. And you have many provinces, including Ontario, that have put policies in place, but there are kind of loopholes in those policies. There in, in Ontario, for example, you can, if you decide not to get vaccinated as a healthcare worker, you can take a course uh, about the importance of vaccines. But once you've done that course, if you choose not to get vaccinated, you can still return to work with certain requirements around testing and PPE. I think Quebec is the first province to say, look, this is the most vulnerable population. We are going to protect them. We're not going to let healthcare workers who are not vaccinated go back to that setting and potentially infect these vulnerable people. I, I think that's the kind of message we need uh, in that as healthcare workers, we will be the first to stand by the science and protect folks who are vulnerable. 
The other big issue in the news this week is back to school. That's something that you kind of approach, I know, from a number of different perspectives. We heard from Ontario's chief medical officer of health on this yesterday, Dr. Kieran Moore, talking about uh, the safety of Ontario schools and the fact that he does anticipate outbreaks. But again, the uh, assertion that he believes the schools are safe. What concerns do you have at this point? What should we be watching for? Yeah, I think, you know, one of the things we, we can do is look at what's happening below the border. Um, they start school sooner than us. Uh, by the end of August, more than 60 percent of kids in the U.S. were back in school. And they certainly saw a huge num increase in the number of kids who got the, the this particular variant uh, when they had their fourth wave. But they, they did get an extra increase in cases when kids went back. So that is something they observed. And they're seeing a lot of cases, to be frank. They, they saw 250,000 kids get the Delta get. Uh, this infection, mostly with the Delta, I would say, uh, in the last week. And uh, unfortunately, just about 1% of those kids ended up in hospital. So it's not a trivial number. Um, this is something we're going to have to look out for. We're in a better position. We have higher vaccination rates. We have better precautions in schools than many states do. Uh, so I agree that we're in a better position, but we will see an increase in cases. It's something that we have to be ready for. Um, and we've got to protect the kids who can get vaccinated with vaccination, so adolescents. And then the kids who can't, we've got to sort of create a cocoon around them by making sure that everyone in their environment is vaccinated. And that means parents, teachers, and then all the other kids at school who can get the shot. Dr. Moore was talking about data to come on, on vaccination for the youngest of the children in schools, maybe in the not too distant future. Are you expecting that? Yeah, I think those data will be will come a little bit sooner than than what we talked about recently, partly because of this, what's happening in the U.S. When you have a lot of cases, it becomes easier to show a difference in vaccine efficacy between the group that got the vaccine and the group that didn't, the group that got the placebo. So in some ways, this increase in cases should get us to a sooner conclusion on that study. I think within a couple of months, we'll know and hopefully it's it's positive. The results are encouraging and we can quickly mobilize and get younger kids vaccinated thereafter. For those under 12, Dr. Gupta, we're right back in right back in the saddle again on Wednesdays. And good to see you on this. Thank you as always for the expertise. See you next week. My pleasure. See you.